knight to c4. And look at this, four pieces hitting the knight. Welcome back to Chess Dog. I am John, and today we are back at the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz. We're now in our Blitz portion of the tournament, and Alareza Ferrugia is in first place overall between the two sections when you combine the two. And today's game is one of his. This is against American Sam Shanklin. Alareza Ferrugia has the white pieces. Sam Shanklin has the black pieces. Let's jump right in. Alareza begins with the English opening. C4. Sam Shanklin plays E6. And here, Alareza plays G3. The previous game we looked at, he played the English, but he did not play G3. So he's using some variety in his openings. D5. A classical approach from Sam Shanklin. Bishop G2, Knight of 6, Knight of 3. And Bishop to E7. Everything, as you see, is revolving around this D5 square. Castles, castles. And now D3. So, uh, he doesn't place this pawn all the way in the center, and that allows Sam Shanklin to play c5 immediately, and he's threatening d4 and gaining some space in the center of the board. So Alareza takes on d5, and after Sam Shanklin recaptures, he plays d4. And uh, this way, white gets their share of the central space, and it's similar to a Tarash defense. Uh, not exactly the same. This knight hasn't been developed yet. There are little differences, but uh, very similar. Knight to c6, knight to c3, and here Sam Shanklin plays knight to e4. The most common move here is h6 to just stop a, the bishop from pinning on g5, but here he avoids that by playing knight to e4 and placing his knight right in the center of the board. And here, Alareza Ferrugia plays a novelty. He plays the move bishop to e3, basically just overprotecting the d4 square. Sam Shanklin responds with knight takes c3, bc3, and then c4 was played, and now Sam Shanklin has a real clamp on the queen side. I mean, this is, a, this is a lot of space over here. However, he does have a weak d5 square, and what Alareza is going to try to do is remove this bishop at e3 and then play e4 to loosen up black's hold on the center. He begins with queen to b1, attacking the b7 pawn, and also making it really hard for black to develop the c8 bishop. The bishop moves, the pawn is lost. A g6 that supports the bishop. If it does go to, it can go to f5. The queen otherwise will control that square. Now it could go to f5, hitting the queen later. Knight to e5, jumping right in and unveiling an attack on this d5 pawn by the bishop at g2. Bishop to d6, attacking this knight twice. And so he defends it again with bishop to f4. Now rook to b8. What Sam Shanklin is doing is protecting the b7 pawn so this bishop at c8 can now develop become active. Alareza plays queen to b5, so he, he sees that d5 is the real target in black's position. So the bishop at g2 and the queen at b5 both attack that sensitive pawn, knight to e7, to create a defender of the pawn. And here Alareza plays bishop to h6. Now, as it turns out, he could actually take on d5 now, uh, with just bishop takes d5. Because bishop takes knight with the discovery of the knight and queen on this bishop doesn't actually work because Alareza could just take with the bishop and then when the queen takes, say takes, takes, this bishop here actually can take that rook that was sitting on b8. So that was possible, but he does not do that. He plays bishop to h6, hitting the rook at f8, a6, kicking the queen away, the queen moves to b2, and now rook to e8, the rook has to move otherwise it will be captured. And here Alareza plays the thematic move he's been working towards up to this point, e4. Uh, now computers say this was a little premature because black could have responded with the move f6. And uh, they give the line of knight f3, d e4, knight d2. Obviously the knight is attack attacking one of these two pawns. But after knight f5, hitting the bishop at h6, the bishop tucks back, knight takes bishop, pawn takes, and then f5. And there's a very nice pawn chain here when white retakes on c4, bishop c7. And it's a competitive game, but uh, with the two bishops, black is probably a little bit better. Uh, but instead, Sam Shanklin just goes ahead and takes on e4. And now knight takes c4, which hits the bishop at d6, threatening to grab the two bishop advantage so that bishop moves. Rook f to e1, hitting the e4 pawn, bishop to e6, counterattacking the knight at c4. Now here, Alareza plays knight to a3, and you say, well, why is he moving the knight to the side of the board? Well, this may be the reason. The other uh, reasonable option was knight to e3, which to the eye makes a lot of sense. But after knight to f5, uh, attacking the bishop, 
when the knights are exchanged, uh, black can play queen to f6, maybe f4, maybe bishop d5, and white's under some uncomfortable pressure on the king side. And my guess is Perugia wanted to avoid this particular position. So he plays knight to a3, knight to f5, again hitting that bishop at h6, the bishop goes to d2, and now knight to d6. Defends the e4 pawn and keeps some pressure on this uh, weak c4 square. Bishop to f4 was played. Well, can he just take the pawn at e4? Um, yes, he can. Uh, and computers are fine with this, but from a human perspective, you really don't want to do this because now white's uh, light squares on the king side are very weak, and black has an unopposed light squared bishop. And that's just from a practical perspective, you don't want to get into this position. It doesn't really matter what computers say. So Ferruja plays bishop to f4, now f5. So this pawn structure that Sam Shankland has on the king side is, is, makes a, quite a strong impression. It's beautiful, really. The only issue is the king at g8 is a little more open than you would like it to be. So it's a little some good, some bad. The bishop, uh, d5, excuse me, was uh, Ferruja's next move. Really an interesting decision. Um, if he plays bishop takes d5, which he, he did not do. Then rook a to d1, pressuring down the d-file. When the bishop moves, there's a pin on this knight. And what Perugia would do is pile up on that knight. First queen to b4, three pieces hitting it. After rook to e6 to defend, knight to c4. And look at this, four pieces hitting the knight. And it looks like black has just lost. As it turns out, there was actually a computer variation in this line where Sam Shanklin could have saved himself. Uh, the move is actually a5, hitting the queen. And if the queen moves to a3, knight takes c4. And after rook takes queen, rook takes d8, the queen would have to move because it's threatened. And uh, here, material is actually equal. Uh, you have a, a knight, a rook, and a pawn in exchange for, for the queen. Uh, so he actually could have survived that. But Sam Shanklin uh, did not go ahead and take that pawn. He just retreats the bishop. To f7, c4 protecting the pawn and perhaps marching forward, forward with c5. And here Sam Shanklin plays a very aggressive move. He plays the move g5. And here's his high idea. When Ferruja plays bishop to e5, which he does, Sam Shanklin plays an exchange sacrifice. Queen takes e5. And now he's going to attack the dark squares with this bishop. And he has a discovery against the queen with knight takes c4. The bishop attacks the queen and the knight attacks the a3 knight. However, there's only one problem. Since he played g6, g5 earlier, now his king is really vulnerable. And he takes the pawn on f5 after Sam Shanklin plays knight to a3, bishop e4, and now we see that black's king is in quite a lot of trouble. Uh, Alareza is threatening queen to h7 check. So Sam Shanklin plays bishop to g6, but then queen to e6, and black does not have a lot of good choices. Let's say he plays a move that seems fairly obvious, bishop to f7 to block that check, but then queen to h6. Now again, he's threatening, uh, even mate now, beginning with bishop h7, check. So after bishop g6, bishop takes and queen takes, and it, it's uh, going to be mate soon with the rook coming in along with the queen. Um, so Sam Shanklin can't block with the bishop, so he moves the king, king to g7. But now bishop to g6, and in this position, Sam Shanklin resigned, but let's look why. Here in this position, excuse me, let's get that back on the board. If he takes the bishop, which he has to do, then queen to e7, check. Now that hits the king and the knight. So if the king were to say move, then just queen takes a3, and white has a decisive material advantage. But if instead he plays queen takes queen, then rook takes queen, and again he's hitting the king, and the bishop, when the king moves, rook takes bishop. And again, he has a decisive material advantage. And even after going over this game, as great as it is, if you really want to see a great game of chess, uh, please watch this next video. This is, again, Ferruja in this Blitz tournament, and this game will really blow your mind. I hope you enjoy it. See you again soon. Bye.